According to a new survey from the Bank of Canada, consumers are becoming more confident in the Canadian economy, especially as expectations of interest rate reductions start to rise. That's kind of a mouthful, isn't it? However, that increased confidence is leading more renters to have higher expectations that they're going to enter the real estate market this year, at least within the next 12 months. Which means some markets, especially if interest rates do start to come down, could see more activity and, once again, higher prices, especially when you factor in the amount of immigration in the country. But before I get into all the details, my name is Nolan Mathias, and if you want the latest Canadian real estate and finance news, this is the place for you. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and hit the like button so more people like you can see this video. And if you're looking down right now and you're going, hey, I thought I subscribed to Nolan's channel. Well, you probably did, but you probably subscribed to the other one, which is now focused on more broader and global economic stories. So if the Canadian information is what you're after, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's jump into the headlines and see exactly Exactly what is going on here. I'm going to take you through the headlines first, talk a little bit about what's happening with expectations on interest rates as a result, and then we'll jump into the actual surveys and I'll show you how Canadians and Canadian businesses are feeling about the most recent economic trends. So let's start first with the BNN Bloomberg headlines. Firms and consumers are more optimistic about the economy amid expected rate cuts. And this is according to a survey that was released by the Bank of Canada today. And the release of this data caused an instant increase in interest rate expectations. So in other words, the sentiment, the positive sentiment associated with these surveys and the way consumers are feeling about the economy caused bond market yields to go up quite substantially at one point, almost 15 basis points, which is quite interesting because if you take a look at where the interest rates have been over the last couple of months, you can see that we're actually up about 0.25% off the lows. Now, that being said, fixed rates have tended to come down. They haven't gone up when there's been interest rate spikes, but how long this will last for is anybody's guess. And if we don't start to see those interest rate decreases that are expected in June and July from the Bank of Canada, we could very well start to see higher interest rates as the margins get thinner and thinner and banks tend to stop competing for more business. Of course, we all know that we don't get our mortgages from B lenders, I mean banks, anyways, right? Because their mortgage products just simply aren't as good as non-bank lenders, making the banks the B lenders when it comes to mortgages. B is for banks. So this will be an interesting chart to watch the Canada five-year government bond yield. If it starts to spike, we could see increases in interest rates as those expectations that interest rates are going to go down maybe go away. Of course, we could see the opposite happen. But a lot of this is actually going to depend on what is going on in the U.S. right now, which is showing signs that they may not have as many rate cuts as originally expected, which is going to put the Bank of Canada in between a rock and a hard place. But that is a story for another time. Hit that subscribe button for the next video where I'll talk about exactly that. Now, I wanna point out the business outlook survey first because this is the survey that is done with businesses that kind of gives an indication of how businesses are feeling because there's two parts of the economy here. There's the business feelings and there's the consumer feelings. And a lot of the time it is what is going on with the businesses that very much drives inflation. Because if businesses expect that their costs are going to go up or they expect that they're going to have to pay higher wages, that could lead to price increases and therefore higher inflation. So typically, the business outlook can be seen as a lead indicator. So in other words, the sentiment often changes with the businesses prior to the sentiment changing with consumers. And there's a couple interesting things to point out here. The first is that business sentiment is starting to improve. Where in the last two quarters last year, it was quite low it's starting to pick up and get somewhat back to normal. And businesses that are planning for a mild or severe recession is also starting to go down, especially relative to the same time last year where the expectations of a massive recession were quite high amongst businesses, with almost half of businesses in Canada expecting at least some form of a recession. And while the expectations of a recession are coming down, that is also leading many businesses to have more subdued expectations with respect to future sales. So while they don't think that the sky is falling and everything is going to get really bad, there is some uncertainty with respect to future sales. But the good news here is that the expectations with respect to higher prices have come down substantially. So relative to 2021 and 2022, where most businesses were expecting that they were not only going to have to increase prices, but have to increase them substantially, now there's less expectation that prices are going to go up, which is a good thing. 
Because if businesses aren't thinking about the fact that they're going to have to increase prices, the chances of them actually increasing prices goes down. And the really good news here is that short-term inflation expectations are coming down substantially, and businesses in general are expecting inflation to come down. Whether it's over the next year, two years, or three years, most businesses are now expecting that over a five-year time horizon, inflation is going to return to normal. Now, the question then becomes, how does that reflect on how consumers are feeling? Because the first piece of the puzzle is how our business is feeling. The second piece is how are consumers feeling? And like I said, the business sentiment usually changes before the consumer sentiment changes. And what I think you'll note here is that for the most part, consumer sentiment is getting better, but not as fast as it is for businesses. And I think one of the most telling graphs in the entire consumer survey is with respect to the consumer's interpretation of inflation. And as you can see from the difference between the blue lines and the red line here, is that consumers are often feeling like inflation is significantly higher than it actually is. And a lot of this has to do with the biases that come from their day-to-day -day activities. So while inflation may actually be substantially lower than it was previously, keeping in mind that inflation is the change in prices, a consumer may think back to a year or two years or three years ago and what they used to pay for a good, like maybe steaks, and see what they pay now and feel like inflation is significantly higher than it is because they're factoring in prices from three years ago rather than looking at today's prices versus the exact prices from a year ago, which is actually really hard for a consumer to A, remember, and B, to actually assess accurately. So while businesses tend to look at their costs on a year-over-year -year basis, consumers may be looking at costs on a year-over-three years basis, which is leading to the consumer sentiment, again, lagging behind that business sentiment. But given that this is very much a Canadian real estate channel, this is the chart that I find most interesting. Because the percentage of Canadians that think that they may have to sell their house in the next 12 months has gone down by almost 3%, indicating that there is a high likelihood we are going to see less and less inventory available if these numbers stay true. But on top of that, the number of people that are planning on buying a property in the next 12 months has also increased. And this number as well has also gone up by about 2%. Then if you take a look at the number of renters that are planning to buy in the next 12 months, well, that number has too gone up almost 2%. So what this tells us is that because of the expectations with respect to lower interest rates, people who own homes are feeling less like they're going to have to sell their homes. And people who don't own homes are starting to think more and more about buying homes, which means we could once again have a perfect storm when combined with the immigration numbers of hot real estate markets in certain areas. And we're already seeing this in Alberta where the market remains hot and has continued to remain hot. And there's a high likelihood that we could see BC and Ontario start to feel upward pressure with respect to their real estate markets as well. In fact, in some cases, we're already seeing this. So it could be a really interesting year for the Canadian real estate market, especially if interest rates do go down, we continue to get more and more immigration, and people just decide that they aren't going to put their houses on the market. Oh, and combine that with the fact that the Bank of Canada just said that we have a massive productivity issue, which I'll link to right here. And it really could be one of the most interesting years that we've seen in Canadian real estate history.